Hello and welcome to another video. In this short video, we are going to show you how we can manipulate this formula uh, into a manner in which we can use a Laplace transform to put it in the time domain. This is a very frequent problem that we encounter. We have to rearrange the formula into one of the standard forms so that we may use the transform directly. And we'll show you how to do that in a minute. The first thing we observe is that we can write the numerator as as plus b. And in which case, the a would be 7 and the b would be 26. So now we can begin to manipulate. But before we do that, we are going to show you the two transforms that we are going to be using. There they are in green. These are standard transforms which you can get out of any reference book or even on the internet. On the left hand side, we have the S domain equation and on the right hand side, we have the time domain equation. So the frequency is on the left, frequency domain equations on the left and the time domain equation that corresponds to that exact expression is on the right. And the two constants that we're looking for there is omega and alpha, as you can see. Now, what we need to do now is we need to massage the denominator of our original equation to get it to look like the one there in the denominator on the left hand side. And as you can see in the orange writing, this is not too hard to do. So if you follow it, you will see that we end up with an alpha of minus 40 and an omega of nine. Now we need to get the numerator into an S plus alpha and possibly an omega as well at the top. Now, if we add 40A, we have to subtract 40A. So when we look at our AS plus B, there we see that we've not changed it in any way because we've added a 40A and we've subtracted a 40A. Now, the reason will become clear in a minute because the 40, the minus 40, is actually the alpha that we worked out before. So if we split it up, into partial fractions and extract the A. Extract the A we have our, on the left side. We have the denominator as we want and we have the alpha on the top, S plus alpha, which gives us S minus 40. So that entire left-hand term is now exactly in the transform we want and all we have to do is multiply it by the constant A. Now, the next one that we see there, b plus 40a over 9, is just a simple mathematical calculation that we can work out. And the one on the, on the far right, the 9 is the omega. So we've got that into the second form. We've got the omega over the denominator that we want by some fancy mathematics. And having the 9 on the top and the 9 on the bottom, they cancel. So we see that we have once again not altered our expression in any way. And that's important if we, we can't alter it, but we can rearrange terms 
and um, massage things to get them into the form that we need them to be in. And this is the whole purpose of this video. So finally, we can see there that because our A is 7, we have 7 times that expression. And then when we work out our B plus 40A over 9, that comes out to 34 using those values for A and B. So we have 34 times the second expression. And then when we go back and we use the transform, we can see that we replace the S plus alpha over that denominator by e to the 40t times cos to the 9t because the 40 and the 9 are the two figures, the alpha and the, sorry, yes, the alpha and the omega. Now, notice that the 40t is positive instead of minus 40t, and that is because our alpha itself is negative. So that counteracts the negative sign and we have a, a positive t there in the expression. And uh, this makes this very, very unstable, extremely unstable because it grows without bounds instead of shrinking. Uh, so it's highly oscillatory because of the cos and the sine and, or, and, and what is worse, it is growing. The oscillation is growing in amplitude. And uh, we might have known that this expression would give us this type of a problem. Because if we go back, we see the 1681 is very, very large at the right side of the denominator. As long as we have that very, very large value there on the right side of our denominator, when we use our expression for quadratic equations, it's almost going to guarantee that because of the balance between the 80s and the 1681, we are going to be guaranteed to have complex roots to that quadratic equation in the denominator. And anytime we have complex roots for our quadratic equation in the denominator, we are going to have oscillatory elements, sine and cosine, in the final answer. So remember that we're trying to avoid oscillation and we're trying to have critical damping and that's not achievable with an equation of this type. So I, it all depends on the coefficients on your quadratic equation. And as we practice some more with these examples, you'll be able to learn and look at the equations and decide is this underdamped, overdamped, or critically damp. Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel, and we'll see you in the next video.